Welcome everyone to We Are Endurance webinar series. Uh, today, we it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Vicki Ventura. She is the race director of Event Power Long Island, and she's gonna talk about all the different races that we have right here on Long Island. And, you know, just, Get your questions ready because we'll have some time at the end to, you know, ask some questions. And before we get started, I'm going to show a short video. And this video, and this video let me just put it um, full screen. Okay, here we go. Whoa. <laughs> so, that's the Smith Point Triathlon. That takes place in August every year. That's a great view. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? What is that? A drone you had? Yes, it is. Nice. Isn't that Ray finishing up there? Yeah, this Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I know Ray did Mighty Hamptons last year. Yeah, Ray passed me on the bike. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Giving you a hard time while you're off camera. <laughs> yeah, that you were cursing at me. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they closed down the road for this. That's nice. Yes, they closed the bridge. So the participants what? bike and run over the bridge, which is closed for the entire race. And then we finish right on the beach. Nice. Well, this is really yeah, that's fun. always a fun race. Cool. That's the lead vehicle with the first female coming in. <laughs> That was great. Thank you for sharing that. That was great. Um, and I just want to say that Smith Point is probably one of my favorite races mm -hmm. because it's just fun. And there's so many people that go and it's just, you know, it's flat. It's easy. I mean, it's not that easy, but <laughs> easy <laughs> enough. <laughs> Easier than some of the other ones. Um, yeah, the only... The only hill on that one is getting over the bridge. So that's a nice one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and I think um, David signed up for that this year and he's, this is going to be his first triathlon, right, David? Nice. I don't know. I, I see like you on the corner. So hi. <laughs> David's in the witness protection program. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So Vicki, why don't you um, start to tell us what your schedule is like? And yeah, so we um, have races all over Long Island from East Meadow to Montauk. And it includes um, our calendar includes two duathlon events. We have a couple of running races, sprint triathlons, with the first one being in a pool. So April 23rd is our first race. It's the Mini Mighty Man Triathlon presented by Northwell Health. And that takes place at Eisenhower Park. So you swim in their newly built freedom pool, which is heated. And then you go out on the bike course, which is closed roads. And then you run through the park. And from there, we have um, a sprint triathlon in the, on the North Fork called the Mighty North Fork Triathlon in South Hold. That's Memorial Day weekend on May 28th. And we have the um, Tri One On Triathlon is in Port Washington. So we've added that to our calendar. This is our second year we'll be uh, managing that event. And that's unique because it has a triathlon and a duathlon at the same time. We have the popular Montauk Lighthouse Triathlon, which is one of the longest distance, longest running sprint triathlons on Long Island. And you finish at the historic Montauk Lighthouse. So that's always a fun one. It's different because it's two transition areas. So you swim, you leave your bike in one area. And when you go start on the bike, you're finishing at 
the lighthouse where you get your running sneakers, you run through Camp Hero, closed roads there, and then you finish at the lighthouse. So that's always um, a different experience with the two transition areas. And then in August, we have the Smith Point Triathlon, which we just showed the video from Smith Point. That's August 6th, and that's at the end of the William Floyd Parkway, Smith Point County Park. And then we have the Tobey Triathlon. So this is our second year organizing the Tobey Triathlon, but it's the 35th year of the race. And that's a big local one, a big first timer race. We have a kids race on Saturday and then the adult race on Sunday. And then we have the historic Mighty Hampton Steve Tarpini Memorial Triathlon also presented by Northwell Health. And that is the longest running Olympic distance race in the country. And that has had professional finishers. Dave Scott has won the race. Karen Smyers, Scott Tinley, Danielle Sullivan is a local pro triathlete. So we've had a lot of pro um, racers come out to the Mighty Hamptons event. Our timer, Greg Sautner, he's PR timing now. He's won the Mighty Hamptons triathlon. And following that is the Mighty Man Montauk triathlon, which is a festival of races. We always say come for the race, but stay for the party. There's a sprint, Olympic, and half iron distance race all on the same day. So it's a, a fun event. And then we have um, the two duathlons. So we have one on Mother's Day, which is a spring duathlon, and one in October, October 15th this year, which is the fall duathlon. And both duathlons have a time trial component to it. So the duathlons are great for anyone that doesn't swim, or it's an introduction to triathlon. So if you want to do a triathlon, but you haven't done one yet, you can start with that, um, the duathlons, or if you're just into riding your bike, we have the time trial, which is the bike course. And that's all you do. Three loops of the bike course. You start 20 seconds apart from other participants and that event we have prize money at. So Mighty Hamptons and the time trials are the two races we have prize money. And this year we changed Mighty Hamptons up. So the prize money is for the teams. So the fastest try team rather than the fastest individual will win the money. So you need five people on your team and the First five that finish score, but it has to be at least one female. So if you have seven guys and then a female, it's the first four guys and then the female that will score for your team. So it adds a little fun component to the event this year. And the duathlons are always held at Heckscher? Yes, Heckscher, State, Heckscher Park in Islip. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the more beautiful um ones that you have like mighty hamptons um and we'll also talk about um steve tarpinian because a lot of people don't you know new to the sport don't really know or don't remember him so if you can talk a little bit about that yeah definitely so in terms of the scenic races mighty hamptons is definitely one of the most beautiful races people that go there for, especially for the first time, we're like, wow, people should be coming all over the world for this race. We do have actually people who have come from three different countries, 12 different states. So people do come each year for the Mighty Hamptons race. It's just a beautiful race site. It's in Sag Harbor. The swim has, knock on wood, always been very calm. Um, it's an out and back along the shore, which makes um, participants more comfortable. You go out on the bike road, which that early in the morning, it's pretty quiet, the roads. And then the run course is flat. It's um, out towards the ferry to Shelter Island and you come on back and it is one of the most beautiful race sites. Um, another beautiful one is Mighty North Fork because the streets are quiet. The You're right in the heart of South Hold, so you could stop the wineries on your way home. They now have breweries out there. So that's just a fun weekend event. And then Montauk. I mean, you can't complain when you're in Montauk. It's a, a vacation right near our homes um, for the local triathletes. So that's always a fun race. You swim in Fort Pond, which is protected, so it's usually not too choppy. Um, the bike course, if you're doing the Olympic or half, you go out to the lighthouse. So that's nice to ride past there. Um, so I'd say those are the top pretty race sites. Um, and then also the Montauk Lighthouse one, which is in July. You get to see Gin Beach, which is really nice. And you actually walk a half mile down the beach, and then you swim in the water. So it's point-to-point -point swim. So you walk down the beach, jump in, and then swim back along shore to your transition area. Um, and then, yes, Steve Tarpinian. So he is a major person in triathlons on Long Island. So he started Event Power in 1982, and there was the Mighty Hamptons Triathlon that was organized, and it was run by Southampton Hospital, and they were going to um, get rid of the triathlon. They weren't going to put it on anymore. So Steve started Event Power so that he could produce the event, and he went on to become one of the most well-known, well-respected people in triathlon and in the industry 
He's um, was part of the coaching certification process for USA triathlon coaches. He founded the, all the races on the Long Island triathlon tour. He has a, had a swim team team total training that coached over 200 athletes, probably more than that. Um, and it really was from beginners to advanced athletes from, I was on the team um, when I was 16. So it had um, teenagers all the way to 85 year olds on the team. And there, and there was a youth team as well. And he had clinics and camps and he coached Ironman winners. He coached racers um, all over the country. He had training camps in Mallorca, Spain. He had training camps in Arizona. So he really um, was just a pioneer in the sport of triathlon, or not just on Long Island, but also across the uh, country. I know he's also written a few books and um, talk about your, how you got involved because you were, you were with him since you were a little girl, practically like <laughs> do you talk about that whole thing. Yeah, I started. Um, so my friends in high school, my friend's dad was sponsoring Tobey Triathlon. Um, he owned Sunrise Tri and Sunrise Cyclery. And she was like, my dad's sponsoring this race. We all have to do it. So a bunch of us, I think it was three of us or three to five of us signed up for the race. And it's an early race morning. And I was the only one that showed up out of all my friends. And I was 16. And I was like, oh, what do I do now? And I remember distinctly, my mom went up to the lifeguards and was like, will you watch my baby? And the lifeguards are like, okay, not realizing there's about to be a thousand people in the water. They're not even going to know who I am once I get in, but they're watching everybody. And I got addicted. A triathlon is an addicting sport. You do one and you get hooked. Um, so I got addicted. I signed up then to volunteer for the Mighty Hamptons triathlon. And I remember I went into the city for our packet pickup and Steve was just so welcoming and, um, he made, you know, he taught me how to check people in, how to be part of the experience. Um, mm -hmm. It was a great team. And then I started volunteering with my friends and stuffing goodie bags and envelopes. And then the next year, you know, I was a part of team total training. And then I became um, the volunteer coordinator. So I was the volunteer coordinator for Mighty North Fork Triathlon. And then slowly I'd see little things that I like to do and would be part of and kind of stick my nose in different places and my daughter's home. Um, and so I became involved in all different aspects of the event. And then I went to college at Cortland for sport management. I knew I wanted to do something with sports. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to own a gym, if I wanted to work for a baseball team. And then when I graduated college, the race director at the time got a new position with soccer, which was his passion. And so I graduated and a week later, I started at Event Power um, as the race director. So it just went up from there and um, now I'm the owner of the company. Amazing, right? Like to that, you, you know, you would have never thought that this would have been your life. And, you know, you, you started at 16 and you kind of continued through and knew what you wanted. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, I remember when I first met the race director when I was 16, I was like, wow, that's the coolest job in the world. Like I would... I didn't even think that I could be a race director because I just thought it was so cool. Like I was like, wow, that's so cool. And that was it. He was a cool, the coolest guy I knew and didn't think more than that. So it's cool how it unfolded. And your husband also is involved, right? Somewhat, or he, he's also a triathlete. Can you talk a, a little bit about yes. how you guys met? And um, Well, Steve introduced us on the pool deck. So we met, he was a part of team total training. And he's um, an avid triathlete. He's won Mini Mighty Man. He's won Mighty North Fork. He's won the Lighthouse Triathlon. He's gotten second at Mighty Man Half, second at Mighty Hamptons. Um, and he he's, works for Event Power in the sense that he's our, I call him our official box mover. So we get a lot of packages, a lot of boxes for the races. And um, so he works in that role, but he's also, he's a triathlete. So he trains. He likes doing the races. Um, he's been the top 10 of Tobey Triathlon for 10 years. So he enjoys races, racing just as much as me. And he got into it with his mom. His mom was like, let's do something together. They signed up for a mini Mighty Man Triathlon. He got hooked and he joined Team Total Training. And then um, he's been racing ever since. And you have three little girls to prove it. Yes. <laughs> we built That's our own cool. relay team. <laughs> Again, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, can you also talk about, you have a partner. Can you talk about um, 
his company as well and what he does with you? Um, so we have a partner for our Montauk Triathlon. Just and the- yeah, it's for Montauk. And his, um, his, what he does when he's not doing the races is sound. So he's always been a sound guy. Um, he does music for different, com- any um, celebrities or anyone that goes out to Montauk and has like a show, he does the music for surf lodge clubs. He does bar, uh, restaurants in Montauk. He does the music for, and then he, him and Steve were very close. And they're the ones that came up with the idea of the mighty man triathlon. And he lives in Montauk. So he's a local. And um, so he came up with the rate site um, with the course maps with Steve and hold on one second. And so they decided to produce the event and he's been involved since day one with that Montauk triathlon. Cool. Anybody have questions for Vicki in terms of any of the races that she puts on? Um, I was just going to ask my question is um, what's the best swag that you can get at a race? <laughs> mm. Well, we're working on ordering stuff today, actually. So if you have any ideas, let us know. Uh, I'm a fan of things that people can use. So like race belts. So you don't have to safety pin stuff to your shirt. Um, you know, the, I, I was never a fan of safety pinning a bib to your shirt. And now you have a little hole in your shirt. Um, and yeah, hold on one second. Okay. Sorry, my daughter's here. Um, do you, do you want to take like, a minute just to take care of your daughter? She wants um, some, <laughs> yeah, some YouTube. I mean, I, I have four kids, so, you know, I'm familiar with that. Here you go. Okay, now go over there. Thank you. Yeah, she's into uh, some YouTube of kids playing with Play-Doh. Um, no more Barney, huh? No, she was never into that. Elmo, we're Elmo family. They stopped Barney. I don't know. I don't know what happened to Barney. <laughs> yeah. He, he um, moved away. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and in terms of swag, um, like beach towels or finisher towels that you can use, whether you're in transitionary, you have a small towel, or if you're on a trainer, you have a towel to put around your bike, water bottles. Um, we really, we try to do a variety of things. You're not getting the same thing year after year. So I think race belts was a a major thing we did last year. People like this year, we're going to work on, um, like towels, finisher towels, like sweat rags for the events, transition towels, water bottles at the races. But if anyone has any feedback, we're always open to it. So definitely send us an email and we'd love to hear your suggestions. I I think the coolest medal that you've given out is the one that was in the shape of Long Island. I thought that was fantastic. That was, that oh, was yeah. really great. Um, nice. I, That's good to hear. And I also just, it's, it's not a question. Uh, I've written to you about this before, but I, I think, you know, the other people should hear. One of the things that I've always appreciated about event power is that you have an official time limit, but you've also gone out of your way to make sure that the late finishers who exceed the time limit can get in and that's you know so important for people who have you know literally put in you know put in months of time training for this and to you know get you know picked up by a van or whatever you know is you know is kind of can be crushing but you know you you stayed out there and you know made sure those people could cross the finish line which is great yeah and um that's nice to hear. And yes, I, I know you've mentioned it before in emails and it's because like someone puts in the training and they put in so much time and energy and everyone has off days. Everyone has really good days and everyone can't always make all the cutoffs. And so you don't know what the circumstances. There's been times where people have gotten like three flats on the course. And I'm like, well, good for you for continuing to go out there on the run. Or, you know, one person did the race and she said, you know, it was the hardest race of my life. And I did it because my, um, her father had just passed away. And so she said the whole race was so emotional and she was like crying to get through it, but she got through it. And just because you don't make the cutoff time, you don't know what's going through people's minds. So my biggest thing is we have to be out of certain places and certain times to pay for permit fees and police fees. But I'm like, if we can have one person on our team ride alongside a couple people that are still out on the course and we can just leave the finish line up. We might have the fencing down and everything down, but leave that finish line up so they can go through that finish line. Then that's all, you know, that I think is the best experience. So just let everyone get to that point because they're all going through a different journey and a different experience. So to cross that finish line, I think that feeling is just a nice one. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And to finish them out, yeah, the Mighty Man half sprint in Olympic was the Long Island. That was a cool one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't want to uh, take the cat out of the bag, but the cat is out of the bag, right? With um, Iron Man coming to Long Island. Mm -hmm. How is that impacting your organization? I mean, are they trying to like take, I mean, what's going on? <laughs> And I think it's a good thing that there's an Ironman on coming to Long Island 70.3 for the racers, for participants that want to do a 70.3 but haven't been able to travel there, for the sponsors, the bike shops, the running shops. This could be a great opportunity to get more people into triathlons, to get more people involved in the sport, to bring more people maybe to our sprint triathlons. Um, the Mighty Hamptons race is two weeks before so hopefully a lot of people sign up for the Mighty Hamptons triathlon and use it as a training like one last push to do your swim bike and run in a row to practice transition areas so that could be a very good thing in terms of the mighty man race um it's definitely going to impact us so we've already seen the impact that it's having um we've had our numbers are down on that race it's very hard to get people to sign up because they do want to do that first 70.3 so as a triathlete and a Long Island triathlete, I don't blame them. You know, you can experience that first time 70.3, but as the race director for the Mighty Man races, it's definitely having an impact. Um, so we'll see how it is closer to the event. But as of right now, we are seeing that. Any any thought that they maybe they move to the spring next year or anything like that? Or I don't think so. Um, I'd we've reached out to them about the date, um, but it seems like this is the date that works for everybody involved in the event. Um, mm -hmm. So we're just, we're thankful that it's not on the same date as the Mighty Man right. um, triathlon, because then we would lose the volunteers, we would lose spectators. So you might volunteer for the 70.3 at Jones Beach, you might be a spectator at that race, but then you you can go now a week later and participate in Mighty Man. Maybe all the spectators will be really motivated and then they'll come out to Mountain Talk and do the sprint and Olympic um, or the half, but the half you do need to train for. Um, and I don't think anyone's going to do two halves that close to each other. Um, now, I know that they canceled Timberman because Rich, who's on the call, um, had signed up for Timberman. Um, and then switched it to Jones Beach. So it seems like what they're doing is they're uh, trying out different areas. And um, I guess if they don't work or I'm not really sure how they decide on different areas, but that's what it seems like, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening is that they're like canceling certain races and yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how it, how it works, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't impact you. Um, any other questions? Morris, have you raced um, an event power race? I just just the one that we, we I ran with you as part of the relay. That's right. I did the bike as part of the relay in Mighty Montauk. That was that was a good course. It was yeah. It was Montauk's great. good. The run has Murder Hill, so it's a nice steep run. Um, but it, what distance did you guys do Olympic? No, we did the half. We the did, half. A, we did, um, a relay. Yeah. So yeah. The half is two loops of the Olympic course, but yeah, that mur the run is beautiful around Fort Pond. And then you get that extra little push up murder Hill. <laughs> do you know if uh, you'll be making any more festival days, you know, with, yeah, I mean, I know you for all your races, you you offer the option of say doing an aqua bike or you know, you know, uh, bike run. Uh, but are you going? Are you thinking of offering more festival days where you could do like a sprint or an Olympic or anything like that? As of right now, we are adding a super sprint to the Mighty Hamptons. So there will be a shorter distance um, course. And this year, Mighty Hamptons is benefiting I Try Girls. So it's going to be similar to the I Try Girls course. Um, and we're working on that right now to get registration open as soon as possible. Um, but that would be the really the only one right now we're looking to do is the super sprint to Mighty Hamptons. Cool. That's interesting. So there'll be a super sprint and an Olympic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. Very cool. 
Yeah, should make it a fun morning and hopefully bring more people out to the sport. And even if they, some people are like, oh, I like doing the sprint distance. I don't think I'd do a mighty, an Olympic distance, but they can still now be part of the Mighty Hamptons experience and say, you know, I swam there or I ran there um, and cross that finish line with us. What's the super sprint going to be? What's the distances on that one? So it'd be a 300 meter swim, um, a six mile bike and around a one mile run. That's great. Yeah, definitely. And I try girls will be there volunteering for the event. So we'll bring them into the, the race as well. Great group. Um, anybody else have any questions? Joanne, you just jumped on. Um, hi. No, it's okay. Do you have any questions for Vicki about the races? I know you've done a lot of them. Uh no, I don't have any questions, but hi, Vicki, and I love you races. I know the Thank you. Up. That's a popular one. I hope to hop in that. Which nice. one? Yeah. The duathlon in Hexha Park. That's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's that's always a nice morning. Yeah. It feels yeah. like spring when you're out there at the duathlon. You're like, all right, spring's here. <laughs> it's like you get you like revved up for the whole season. It's just a little. Yeah, definitely. A little splash it out the water. <laughs> Would you ever do a full triathlon out at Hexer? The no, we haven't looked at that just because where the water is, it is could be pretty rough there. Um, and then to where the transition area is. And one reason why we haven't is also closing the road to the park. Now we changed the road to the park because they have those um those campsites there now. So that's yeah. why our bike course has changed. So we haven't looked into that. Um, not to say that we wouldn't, we could always revisit it in the future. Um, but I know in the past it was, it only worked out as the duathlon. Okay. Yeah, there, um, in that same vein, have you ever thought about doing one at Tobe? Like swimming no, or a sprint? Oh, You're on the South Shore. On the South Shore. Oh, no, I haven't. You know, that could be a possibility as well. It's a yeah. perfect place, really, for, I would think. I mean, we, we train there all the time, and it just seems like I, I was really surprised when I saw, like, the Jones Beach Ironman was taking place at um, Saks Bay. <laughs> and Tobe is, like, right there, and it's, like, perfect. Yeah, definitely. That's something to think about as well. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a nice place, nice venue over there. Um, and I know um, the, um, they, they have that swim run over there also. Mm -hmm. Yes, so the aqua kind of, run. Yeah, so I mean, just putting in a, you know, a super sprint or something. Yeah, that's true. Actually. That's where I grew up, Tobay Beach, so that's a nice area. Yeah. Um, anybody else have any questions or any thoughts, comments? I don't know. Maybe we should end it before we give Vicki more things to do. <laughs> <laughs> My to-do list is growing. <laughs> yeah. All well, right. Thank you everyone for listening and tuning in. Yeah, and we're going to send this around to everybody so they'll hear about it. Oh, one more thing, you know, since um, I'll, you know, we do have a big group of, of uh, runners, only runners. Um, can you talk a little bit about your running races? So we have, um, right now we have the Beacon of Hope 5K. That takes place at Montauk Lighthouse. And that is for two beneficiaries, Women Coalition um, for Cancers and Lucia's Angels. And it directly benefits two not-for-profits in on the East End for women with um, cancers. And last year, it was the first year of the race, and we raised over $20,000 for the not-for-profits. Wow. So, it, yeah, it's a huge event. And it starts and finishes at the Lighthouse, and it runs through Camp Hero. And it's basically the Montauk Lighthouse Triathlon Run Course. And that's what we use for the 5K um, event. And it's such a nice event. It's so touching. All the women that have our survivors have a different color bib number. And they got a, a flower tiara when they cross the finish line and the finisher medals are really cute and the awards. So it's just a, it's a very sweet event. And that's um, June 17th this year, oh, Saturday okay. in Montauk. 
And then we have the Massapequa Park Turkey Trot, which is a 5K in Massapequa at Brady Park. And you run a mile and a half on closed roads and then through a bike path on the Massapequa Preserve and you run down. And this is the funnest race because for all our events, triathlons, if you win your age group, you win Tate's and everyone loves the Tate's cookies. But for the Turkey Trot, <laughs> If you win your age group, you win a pie from a local bakery. So like a homemade pie <laughs> and the top three male and female winners win a frozen turkey so that they have a turkey for Thanksgiving and they get a pie too. So wow. this is the one race where everyone sticks around for <laughs> the award ceremony. We never go home with extra awards. So it's a fun one. <laughs> I got to get faster to win that one. I got to get a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or you just have to stick around long enough so that you age into a winner's bracket. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. So those so those are the th three races that you have? Uh, those are the two 5Ks. We are working on the third one, which is the Vineyard Run, which we've had in the past. Um, we haven't picked solidified a date yet for this year and that's a 5k run through the duck walk vineyards and you run through the wine the vines of where the grapes are grown and then when you finish you get a wine tasting and we have live music so that's a fun event as well yeah that was a great event um i went one year and then after we finished we went to a couple of other wineries and it was a lot of fun with the group. yeah that is a fun one so the stepping stone is no more no, we don't have that one anymore. We stopped before with COVID and then they needed to, it was something with the grants that they, um, the Lighthouse Foundation for Stepping Stones had. Um, and they said if they're able to bring back the race in the future, they definitely will. But right now it was on hold. Okay. Well, that was a very fun race also. Yeah, that park is so nice. It's beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. Um, okay. Anybody else have any questions before we wrap this up? No. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Vicki, for your time. This was great. Very informative. So we appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. I appreciate it. Have a thank good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.